Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Common Sense Academy. I'm your host, Joe Pometto. Joe, the lawyer. Today uh, is an episode of Sovereign Citizen Shorts. We're going to take a look at an article and a few other gems that we found on the website. This is the Common Sense Academy. On this channel, we talk about sovereign citizens, First Amendment auditors, and people behaving badly. And we also have a little um, ritual that we do before we watch the video. We raise our cup our glass in the air and we do the same time sip because it tastes better when we sip together. Cheers. Also, if you like my content, please subscribe. Please share. Those are two free things you can do to support this show. Subscribe. I'm trying to get to 10,000 subscriptions. YouTube will give me a merchandise deck in, in cool features. Also, if you share my videos, it's the most powerful way for me to get my message out and get new subscribers. Thank you very much. So we're going to look at this article. Driver who declared independence from society loses legal battle over unpaid parking fine. Oh, really? He lost? What a surprise. The only person who thought he was going to win was probably him. A self-declared free spirit man. Now, that's a new one, everybody. That's a new one. Who told South Australia's Supreme Court he is independent of society and lives free from law and government has lost a year-long legal battle over a parking ticket. Boy, this needs to, this maybe has to take the cake for the longest uh, parking ticket lawsuit ever. Timothy Noel Rossiter also argued he displayed a sign stating, Notice, private property, no trespassing on his windscreen, and the inspector did not have permission to attach the ticket in question. <laughs> Ah, so that's how you avoid a ticket. You put a notice on your windshield. Thank you, Timothy. Handing down his judgment, Justice Mark Livesey said the case involved legal nonsense. Thumbs up to this judge. and was an unnecessary waste of scarce public and judicial resources. Absolutely, sir, especially in this time of global pandemic. He said Mr. Rossiter had been issued a parking ticket for breaching a 30-minute time limit in the Adelaide CBD in April 2019. But according to a judgment published this week, he challenged the notice using a 2012 letter that denied his consent to be governed. My truth in law exists inside of me, Mr. Rossiter wrote to the Adelaide City Council. If anyone does revoke or deny consent, they exist free of government control and statutory restraints. Oh, yes, and if I just wished that uh, my monopoly money was real money, it would work that way. Oh, it wouldn't? Oh, okay. In the letter, Mr. Rossiter called himself a free spirit man, but Justice Lives, he said there was no evidence the letter was ever sent to the council, and its effect is most unclear. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. The effect is clear. The effect is zero. It is incapable of generating any defense. There we go. The judge also noted that despite Mr. Rossiter's attempt to disengage from society, his letter sought to preserve his right to police protection and free education. <laughs> Mr. Rossiter's case was first heard at the magistrate's court, where instead of entering a plea, he spoke only the words, I am man, but I am man. <laughs> oh, man. But was found guilty and fined more than $1,700. All 11 grounds of his Supreme Court appeal were dismissed by Justice Livesey, including the consent and trespass arguments, and he was fined a further $680. Man, they're hitting him for this judicial waste. The judge described Mr. Rossiter's case as without merit and based on various pseudo-legal arguments. You nailed it, judge. If he has acted on the advice of others, he is well advised to stop doing so. Yeah, he's acted on the advice of others. Internet idiots. His decision to defend has resulted in a trivial parking fine escalating to a financial burden exceeding $2,000. Although he probably costs the, the courts a lot more than just $2,000. So in the end, he probably uh, made off. And uh, the sad thing is he's never going to pay that money. Okay, so let's move on to uh, our next Sovereign Citizen short. This was pulled off of the Am I Being Detained Reddit thread, which you guys should check out. Uh, just sharing. I, this appears to be posted on Facebook. Just sharing. I sent a money order and an affidavit of appointment of fiduciary to the agent of my car's insurance for paying my premium. Well, so far, an employee has been emailing me and keeps demanding payments. 
I'm going to hit them with my notice of liability this group gave us. Thank you. The saga continues. Number one, get out of this group, dude. Get out of this group. They're giving you a notice of liability. What that means to me is you're going to end up liable for something. You are going to be the liable party. The scariest part about this guy is that he's a conversation starter. He's out there spreading lies, misinformation, and doing real harm to the public. These Facebook groups are terrible. Okay, so here's a, a, a another funny uh, post. This was on Twitter with Tommy Loren, who's a uh, well-known conservative uh, pundit here in the United States. So the Dallas salon owner who reopened is sentenced to seven days behind bars. What a crock of crap, especially when actual dirt bags are being released from jail. Hashtag reopen America. So in Dallas, Texas, in the United States, a, a salon owner was jailed for running her business when there's a stay-at-home order in the state. Okay, It's been all the rage here in the U.S. I know I have non-U.S. Um, uh, viewers. That's why I'm filling you in. Okay. And here's the response from Sharon Shock. It could be an interesting case. She could say extortion by a corporation without jurisdiction. Okay. Admiralty law. Dallas court system is using admiralty law while owner of shop is protected by the constitution. Look, if you throw enough sovereign citizen garbage at anything, it will almost sound plausible. Please don't listen to Sharon Shock. She's probably in the same Facebook group as the last guy. Okay, and here's our final, here's our final little gem. Um, I know, you know, there's all this controversy over masks, masks. Oh my gosh. Um, I wish people would just, here's the thing with the masks, in my opinion, is it's such a low cost thing to do. I mean, literally, what does it do? Obstructs your breathing a little bit? I mean, just put a mask on. What does it hurt? What does, it doesn't hurt anything. My freedoms. Okay, look, I'm, I'm, I, I, I tend to, you know, I'm sort of a libertarian type guy, so I'm out there for your freedoms, but this is not a significant freedom that's being uh, infringed upon. I'm sorry. Okay, so I will not be masked, tested, tracked, chipped, or poisoned to support this orchestrated lie. This will not be my new normal. I do not consent. Guess what? Nobody really asked you for your consent on this issue. Nobody really asked you for it. This probably isn't a sovereign citizen, but you never know. Um... And, you know, with the masks, I could go on and on with the masks. Look, I don't think, just when you go into stores, when you go into the public, I'm not driving around in my car with a mask, okay? And uh, some of the people I interact with were not always wearing masks. But when you're out in public, when you're in the places, just, you know, just throw one on. Come on. It's not that hard. That's the thing. And I, I, this isn't going to last forever, I hope. Uh, so thank you very much for tuning in to the Common Sense Academy. This is Joe Palmetto, Joe the lawyer. I hope you had some fun with me looking at these sovereign citizen goofballs. Uh, if you like my content, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Really would appreciate subscriptions. Really would appreciate shares. Um, it's the best way to support this show and help me grow. Besides my patrons, my patrons on Patreon, actually, they are number one. They help me grow and produce this show more than anybody else. Thank you very much, everyone.